The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Sizing up my screen a little bit here. Uh, thanks for starting your trading day off Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. As we jump right into it right now, folks, you have markets trading to lower price. We have the ECB. They're going to be hiking rates. We'll jump over to that in a moment. The market trading a little bit south. You have Europe trading negative as well. Right now, you're looking at an S&P negative by 14 points, trading right at about 4,100. We had some nice price action overnight up to 4,135 in the S&Ps. And we're currently trading at 4,100. NASDAQ 100, you were trading above 12,700. We give up about 175 points. We're trading 12,550. You got the Dow right now negative by 80 points. Russell negative by six. Excuse me, crude. How about crude yesterday? It doesn't stop, man. Up to 123.18. You're talking about almost a $4 move in the price of crude over the period of about a few hours from 10 in the morning till about 1.20 Eastern time. Uh, maybe they were out there watching our interview, my interview yesterday with Teddy Kegstad talking about crude. We got off the air at about 10 o'clock and this thing accelerated, man. I kid, I have kid, but Teddy's been making some great calls in that crude market for sure. Crude, uh, put this thing on a daily, folks. You talk about continued strength, right? Yeah, barely some negative action today, but you're talking about basically now sitting at a sustained level. I mean, anywhere between 120 and 130 is the high in crude. But we were not able to close above 125. You got yesterday to 123.18. So we were pushing the highs that we had back on March 7th, over three months ago, folks. That is remarkable when you think about crude hit 130 three months ago, March 7th. And man, it's still chopping around at $121 per a barrel. Gold contract this morning down about $5 to $18.50 right now. Silver down 11 pennies to 21.97, and we jump to notes and bonds. Be interesting to see how the day goes. That's your daily. Back to the 15 minute. We're seeing a little bit of lower price and higher yield right now. We'll, so we're trading down 16 ticks at 136.14, 134.30. Oh, that's the 30 year. Let me get back to the 10 year. Excuse me. 117.25 is where we're trading at right now. You're down almost 10 ticks, and you're within about 17 ticks of the low that we had on May 9th, that's a month ago. Think about that, right? A month ago, we were at 117.08. The 10 year got all the way, almost four points higher. And we've given it all back, just like that. We're sitting well above 3% right now. Let me just see exactly where we are right now because we gotta be well above it at these prices. 3.06, just like that, 3.06%. The yield on the 10 year, we of course get the Fed next week and we have the ECB today. So let's jump over to some of the headlines from the ECB. We got a few up here. They cement the July liftoff hints at half point September hike. Uh, net bond buying under their plan set to conclude in three weeks. Inflation outlook will determine path of borrowing cost. Well, that should be a given. Uh, but the European Central Bank, they committed to a quarter point increase in interest rates next month, open the door to a bigger hike in the fall as it confronts record inflation so they're starting it uh they're starting it in july they may even ramp things up from there be interesting to see how that plays into the currency action the dollar been so strong recently uh higher interest rates dollar strength we'll see if the ecb and their decision to lift off starts to impact that i'm sure it will we'll just see how over in europe markets negative territory as you may imagine dax right now down one and three quarters percent you have the FTSE down a full percent cat roll down 1.5 percent uh over in asia nikkei was flat shanghai down about three quarters percent but europe getting hit higher rates coming down the line you see what happened to our market when we had that happening uh and yeah the european markets now it's their turn so they see inflation averaging 2.1 percent in 2024 well, yeah, technically that would be exceeding their goal of 2%, but right about now, 2.1% versus 2, I think we'd take that. When I think, what's the CPI number supposed to be tomorrow? Something like 
8.2%, I think is the headline number that we're looking for. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can find the article. I have a lot up here. Yeah, that's another ECB article. Groceries are rising the most. Let me see if it was right on the front page of the Bloomberg. Because there's an article here talking about, there we go. Yeah, this is the one I wanted. Uh, was checking it out on my mobile phone early this morning. Why inflation is hitting American households like never before. So you hear a lot of talk about the headline inflation number versus the core number. We're going to get CPI tomorrow. That's going to be an important number. Utilities, gasoline, and grocery prices have been rising at double digit levels all spring and it's probably about to get worse food and energy is not a part of the core element of consumer prices okay economists like to strip out food and energy out of their inflation calculations quote unquote from this article they're too volatile to be meaningful they say but for everyday americans coping with exploding prices those items are pretty much all they care about right now Watching this dichotomy play out, folks, is going to be an interesting one, because regardless of what happens with the core numbers for the Fed, these have issues to do with supply chain problems. OK, you're talking about food. You're talking about energy during a war going on. OK, uh, for two straight months, the primary consumer expenses, fuel, power and grocery store food have all been rising at double digit annual rates for the first time since 1981. It's the first time that for a couple months, all three of them are all in double digits. Now, energy is like 50% or something crazy. Wait till you see this. Yeah. So check this out. Now, I had to take a look at this a couple times here. Black is the electric and utility year-over-year -year percentage growth, okay? So right now, that number you can see pushing probably 10 12%, somewhere on this chart. They don't do a very good job of giving you the exact numbers. Uh, gasoline and fuel in gray, well, yeah, that's representing, what, a 50% increase year over year and then food at home pushes the total between the three up to like 75 percent when you think about where you were the last time all three of them were doing that was back in 1980 we've seen some huge numbers in terms of spikes for inflation but usually those numbers had to do with energy and oil 2000 2008 before the market fell out of bed Pretty similar one going on now, but we have quite a rise in all three of them going on, okay? 8.2% is the number that we're looking for for CPI. And wait, I want a couple more. Yeah, so you have, very anecdotal, but you have somebody in Miami, utility bill just hit 234, up from $100 a typical month ago. Now you wanna hear something crazy. And it makes sense, but boy, these numbers are pretty harsh. Prices for everyday expenses, as they go up, more families are going without. Some 31% of households found it somewhat or very difficult to pay usual household expenses. That's one out of three, folks, compared to 25% the same time last year. That's one out of four. All right, now I'm pushing 31 to 33, but you get the point. 9% of households sometimes or often didn't have enough to eat. That's almost one out of 10 versus 7% a year ago. Here's a number that's really startling. Challenges, of course, most harsh for those in the lower income Americans. Gasoline and power bills now account for about 34% of monthly budgets for low, lowest earning consumers, up from 31. One out of $3 for the lowest earning Americans, gas and power bills. We got a lot to talk about, folks. We got markets turning negative. We're trading at 4,095. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we get the S&Ps negative by 18 points. You get the NASDAQ negative by 73 points. NASDAQ 100, that is, and the Dow off by 100. Checking out the Euro-US dollar action. So immediately, you get some action up to 107.7, we'll call it. Uh, but look at that give back. You, had, you have Christine Lagarde. I think she still may be speaking, or she was speaking. So not sure what she said at about 8.40 a.m., but uh, not quite a huge reaction as the ECB will be starting their lift off in July. They're starting with at least a quarter basis point 50 is totally possible. As we know, things can change pretty dramatically in the span of a few weeks. We saw Target come out with their revision only a few weeks after their dismal earnings. And uh, today, I think they announced uh, an increase in their dividend. You get a lift off barely pre-market, but with the market trading negative right now, you have Target flat to barely in the positive uh, going to be an interesting day in the markets, to say the least, folks. And I'm going to jump over real quick because you're seeing the action, folks. We have a great event going on tomorrow. My dad, Tom O'Brien, he's doing a time in the trade methodology webinar tomorrow. Sign-ups for this end at the end of the business day today, folks. We're taking down the order page at about 4.30. So if you want to get into it, get into it today. It begins at 9 a.m. tomorrow, five hours, time in the trade webinar. Uh, you get the book mailed to you for free. You have a month of his newsletter, those two, $169 plus an $88 value for the book, and the course is $295. It will be archived. And when you get one of these webinars, folks, at TFNN, that archive is available to you pretty much forever. As long as we're around, that archive is going to be available on your account page up there in TFNN. So check it out. He'll be live at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, and we got quite a market, folks, coming into that type of action uh, as he goes over his timing of the trade methodology. S&Ps right now, negative by 18. We got the Dow off 101. Market's drifting a little bit negative. We're actually below where we were at the lows before you had actually traded higher right now. Pre-market lows were sitting right now in the Dow at 32,800. The S&Ps, they had made it all the way up above 4140. Look at the action. We are now at pre-market session lows for the S&P at 4,096. Let's check around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading this morning. Microsoft, I got an article up there I want to talk about with Microsoft talking about you're going to be able to play their, their games just using their TVs soon. Uh, that's where the future is going for sure. Consoles, you don't need a console when you can just put a console right into a TV. Microsoft, though, you're down about two bucks as you have the NASDAQ 100 down about 70 right now. We jump over to Amazon. 
right now. Trading down about, look at that action on Amazon, man. Talk about a, a high of 129. We've almost given up $10 from where we were trading in the highs on Monday. Amazon right now trading with a 119 handle. We jump over to Google shares. Google trading at 2333. We see how Tesla's trading. Talk about some volatility. Tesla getting a lift. You're up $20 at 746 for Tesla. Twitter right now sitting at about $40 for Twitter shares. All right, let's jump around and see what else I had pulled up. And I had, yes, this rate list lift off. Is that the one? No, I was talking about the main article I had up here. Yes. So I wanted to finish with one statistic in here that I did not get to. I talked about the fact that the poorest of Americans, the lowest earners, spending nearly one out of three dollars on just their budget for gas and power bills. Whew, that is just brutal, man. Um, and the one thing that I didn't get to on this is that consumers currently owe about twenty two billion dollars in overdue utility bills almost double the $12 billion seen in a typical year. So these prices are mattering, folks. That's what you take from that one. Uh, $22 billion in over two, overdue utility bills. People shuffling around a little bit in terms of where they're paying their bills. You know, maybe they stretch out the utility bill to make sure that they can put food on the table, to make sure that they can actually pay for the gasoline that they're having at the gas station as opposed to paying the utility bill that they might be able to stretch out. The tough deal with utility bills is that they'll shut you off. And that's a tough one. And uh, as they say, you know, we may be in, I think it's, yeah, we could have severe hardship in this country. Families' budgets are being cut. It's likely they're being taxed and there's no end in sight. They're being taxed at the gas pump, man. They're being taxed for utilities. They're being taxed for food. So keep that in mind when we get the CPI number tomorrow because I was checking out that article, some great stuff in there. And boy, you know, you talk about if you're spending one out of three dollars, folks, on gas and power, what are you spending on rent and and where and what are you spending on food? That's a tough one, as we all can understand. All right. Let's look up a little optimism. J.P. Morgan says equities are flashing a bullish signal. They're talking about forty four hundred as fair value in their analysis. Fair value in the second quarter, 4,400. There's a chart of the S&P in terms of where that lines up. Maybe a little bit oversold coming into the lows that we just previously had. Um, so one of their analysts out here, I believe. Let's see. Strategist. They're talking about. Uh, my, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I'm not going to say. Strategist led by Nikolaos Panagertsoglu. That's a tough one. Excuse me for getting that name. Uh the reduced demand for hedging equity risk is a bullish signal as it likely reflects low equity positioning by investors. There are some tentative signs that inflation volatility could be peaking, which would be consistent with markets continuing to look through the spike. I just gave you some tough, tough statistics in terms of where we are on gas, food, energy. Those are going to persist and may even get worse. We jump to this article. There's stats out there for everybody, which makes things so tough, folks. And I don't say that in a bad way. Um, there's analysis out there for politics for everybody, and sometimes that is not a good thing because I feel like sometimes uh, that is not helpful to the country. Let's put it this way. But nobody knows where this is going to go, okay? In terms of we have a very volatile period of three to four months coming down the line of is what the Fed is doing mattering? Is it having an impact? Is it having too harsh of an impact on the economy that it's going to put us into a recession? And then on top of that, you just need supply chains to start to loosen back up to be able to get goods to where they need to go. And the price of energy needs to come down. And I don't know if that happens. And we get to see that play out over the next three or four months. <coughs> Excuse me, but 4,400 in the S&P, folks. Is that a number that we what what's going on with oil for that number? That's what that's what I was trying to get out of my mouth, as in. Is that number contingent on oil sitting at 123 or 124 or, or 140? Or is that contingent on oil potentially waning from the highs it's had recently? Because I imagine that that may have an impact on whether these markets are able to reach 4,400 in the second quarter of this year as a fair value. Uh, and they point out, here you go, strategists. And these are great strategists, folks. You're talking about J.P. Morgan. You're talking about Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley, this name I can actually pronounce. Michael Wilson forecasting the U.S. Ben benchmark will trade close to 3,400. So choose wisely, because depending on these two gentlemen, you choose incorrectly, and you're a thousand points off. 3,400 to 4,400. 
mid to late August, implying a 17% downside. So Morgan Stanley's got a guy out there telling you 17% lower. JP Morgan now has a guy out there telling you we got 7% higher. And on Monday, I guess you have another strategist reiterating their bullish view on stocks, saying the fundamental risk reward for equities is likely improving as we approach the second half of the year. What's happening with crude on those types of analysis, folks? That's what you need to be asking yourself. Because right now, crude's trading at $121.38. My friends and I were talking about it this morning. Um, crude, unfortunately, energy prices, they get political, okay? Everybody's gonna say, if you're not a fan of Joe Biden, very easy to say that he should be getting it done. Very difficult to say that he gets it done for the globe and that somehow, if Republicans controlled office, that the world would be dealing with high energy prices and the U.S. would not. But no matter what, folks, it is hitting people, man, and people are talking about it. And S&P's at 4,400, where's crude gonna be? Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back for the open. If you wanna take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ADC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you have markets in negative territory, right where we came into the opening bell. S&P's right now down about four tenths percent. You get the NASDAQ 100 down about six tenths percent. Dow off 103. We jumped to crude trading down 77 pennies. Well, you're talking about right near recent highs of 123.18. Crude trading at 121.34. The gold contract right now down about five bucks. Let's check back in on the euro US dollar and see how it's trading as we have the ECB lifting off. You actually have the euro go a little bit lower after spiking to 107.7. You almost traded down a full basis point to 106.7. You make it to 106.8. Right now, you have the euro trading at about 107, just a hair under that price level uh, for the euro. And on top of that, let's see how Europe is trading right now. 
Yeah, right where you were. DAX down about 1.6%, FTSE down more than a percent, CAC roll down 1.3% right now. Jumping back to some more inflation talk. Online U.S. inflation slows again, but groceries rise most of all. So this is Adobe data that's out today. Groceries, we just talked about, right? Groceries, groceries, energy, utilities, all growing at double digits. Well, groceries, 11.7% in May. That is just bonkers, man. Um, but we all know it's the truth. It is somewhere around that because prices, you can't deny the elevations, the elevated levels we're dealing with this year. Online inflation, online inflation, this number is, okay. Rose at 2% in May from a year ago, down from 2.9% in April, and the record 3.6% in March. 10 of the 18 components tracked, including electronics and toys, saw prices fall in the month, indicating consumers may be pulling back on discretionary spending. Q Target with their news on that same degree. Grocery prices, 11.7% in May from a year earlier, the most on record, uh, and 1.3% from April. 1.3%. They rose month over month. Groceries. This was the first month that the category overtook apparel, which was in the top spot for price growth over the year. Despite the modest increase in consumer spending online, an uncertain economic climate and rising costs in core areas like groceries are putting a hamper on overall demand. That is the Vice President of Growth Marketing and Insights at Adobe. Annual online price increases, you check it out. I mean, that's a declining number. Now, here's what I'll say is we had a declining number for December and January before you jump back up to these levels. The one thing that's going to be tough, though, is do you see the comps we're dealing with for the rest of the year? Okay. Yes, we had some tough comps in April and May, but look at the beginning of 2021. We had some outliers or so, nothing like the end of the of 2021 in terms of the inflation numbers we're dealing with, right? July, 3.1%. August, 3.1%. These are just online numbers again. September, 3.3%. We got a dip on October. Then we got 3.5% in, what's that? November, December, 3.1%. And 2.7. So we're going to be dealing with comps that are pretty harsh all the way from right now all the way through to basically March of next year on the online arena. That's the reason why it's going to be so important what's happening in the next few months, whatever it is, because if inflation does not abate over the next few months, then that means it's really rocking on a two year basis. Because we're going to be dealing with comps when you talk about CPI that are very, very lofty levels, right? Like we're going to post probably an 8.2% inflation number for the month of May in 2022. We get that number tomorrow. Well, a year from now, all the market has to do is hold an inflationary number. The core is going to be something like 6% or something. So outside of food and energy, if we just hold the 6% inflation number, we're at 0% in two years. You understand, you understand a year from now. As in, that number is so high already that the comps are very difficult. Now, I imagine it's going to keep rising. All we want to do is get it down to 2%. So think about a year from now, an ideal scenario from May of 2023 is that we only grow 2%, 2 to 3%, give ourselves even a little room, off of the 8% number we're about to hit tomorrow. OK, so that's why if inflation's persisting, it really matters because you're persisting on an exponential level where you're compounding interest upon interest, uh, inflation upon it, inflation, I should say, on a yearly basis. Uh, but a little bit of waning data. We'll see if CPI matches up with that in tomorrow. Uh, while many categories are easing in price, food prices in May surged. Check out the annual number. Food is just rocking, man. So I know the Fed loves the core number. But we're dealing with factors outside of the core number right now that the reason why they take them out of the core is because they're so volatile and the Fed has trouble controlling those as much because of external factors that provide volatility. But all that means is that the Fed can't do as much to control energy prices and food prices. If we have supply chain problems, we have disruptions and we have a war going on. No matter how many times they hike 50 basis points, it's not going to matter. So that's where you see some of the other debate going on. Um, Kathy Wood, right, talking about that the Fed doesn't need to destroy the economy when it might not have the impact to fix the problems that are actually causing the inflationary tendencies. That is a real argument to make, folks. OK, and we're going to get to see it play out. Some of those issues are waning. 
But as the Fed hikes, if you see food prices and energy prices persisting, it's not going to matter what's happening to the core prices if people are spending 12% more on groceries, 50% more, if not 100% more on oil prices, gas prices at their pump. That's, that's, a, that's a reason to keep the spikes up on your back, folks, and realize when somebody says 4,400 in the S&P is where we're going, what is that based on? Because I see a lot of risk to the downside at 4,400 with everything set to play out, a war going on and crude at $120. Uh, utility bills now at 24 billion versus 12 billion, right? So keep that in mind in a big way. All right, what else we got going on here? Let's see what articles I got pulled up. What are we going to talk about? Yeah, let's talk about the Microsoft article. So Microsoft, bringing the X Game Pass cloud streaming to smart TVs so users don't need a console. Uh, the Xbox app to Samsung's 2022 smart TV and then expand distribution to other manufacturers. They're focused on bringing its gaming service to people who don't have consoles. Very smart. I don't have a console right now. They could probably get some money off me if I could just fire up my smart TV and occasionally play a game if I wanted to. Don't video game enough to buy a whole console at this point. Uh, but they're releasing an Xbox app for smart TVs. They said Thursday it will be the first uh, to bring it to that Samsung TV. Then they'll start otherwise. It's a bold bet after Xbox hardware revenue jumped 92% last year. They probably realized they pulled forward a lot of that numbers, right? If you didn't buy an Xbox or a console in the last two years during a pandemic, are you buying one now? I don't want to sit inside and play video games, man. Didn't want to do it then. Definitely don't want to do it now. Uh, the app's going to be available June 30th in 27 countries. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and yeah, they want to get people on recurring revenue 10 bucks a month for their Game Pass. I don't feel like buying a console with a uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but yeah, I would pay ten bucks for a Game Pass, man. I'm paying more for my Disney bundle. I'm paying double ten bucks a month for Netflix, probably. Um, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see. That's got some time to play out, and I imagine the performance for a smart TV not going to be basically what it is if you're buying an actual console um, for the degree. Jumping over to that target news. So they raised the quarterly dividend by 20% despite margin pressure. Uh, yeah, to a $1.08 a share despite the problems they've had. They've raised their quarterly dividend every year since it went public in 1967. Last year increased it by 32%. Uh, target though? Let's check it out. Well, they're a bit positive in a negative market this morning. Target shares, they've been... Look at where they are, though. They're right where we were on Monday before that news of the revision. Interesting action. Target right now. Positive by three tenths percent. S&P is negative 14. We'll be right back, folks. Are you folks. in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got markets turning south right now. We're almost back to Tuesday lows. Uh, the morning on Tuesday, you trading about 4,080. We're back to 4,087. The market's given up almost 60 points from where you were pre-market. We're negative by two-thirds percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ, negative by eight-tenths percent on the NASDAQ 100. We got about another 100 points to the lows of Tuesday. We got the Dow right now off 155. Quite a drop-off. But as our man Basil Chapman says, he's coming up next at 10 o'clock, folks. The day is young. It is very young. 12 minutes into the trading day. Uh, we got a long way to go. All right. Let's jump around to what else I had pulled up here. Whoops. So we talked about Target. We talked about Microsoft. How about Amazon? Amazon? Now, this almost plays like a free ad, man. It's amazing once you get to a point... CNBC and, and financial news sites, they just publicized basically your PR release marketing material. Amazon will let you try on digital versions of shoes you want to buy. For disclosure, I do have a small position in Amazon retirement, folks. Everybody's got some Amazon if you got index funds. Um, on Thursday, they rolled out a new virtual, sh virtual shopping tool that uses augmented reality technology to enable users to try on shoes before you buy them. I'm not sure that would work with my wide feet, but... Uh, the technology is probably going to get there at some point. The feature won't help users figure out how the shoes fit, but it will give them a sense of what they look like. Well, once they figure out the first part of that sentence, that's when it will matter. But they're going to get there, folks. Uh, your phone's going to be able to map out your foot, man, and know exactly the dimensions. We are probably not as far off as you think. I think I heard the CEO at one time of Levi saying, listen, the way it's going to work in the future is uh, we're going to – design jeans for every single person depending on their fit this whole deal that you got from men you got you know 32 inch waist 34 inch waist 36 certain fit whatever it is uh you're just gonna get scanned by your phone or something like that it's gonna know your dimensions it's gonna tweak those dimensions um this is like the first little tease of it but you can see where it's going now as i said when they can actually have it figure out how it fits that's where all the gold sits, in my opinion, because buying shoes online, I do have a wide foot. It's difficult. New Balance has some great wide shoes um, that are available, wide settings, but it's difficult when you're doing that. Clothes are a similar deal, right? A lot of retailers, if you watch them, if you're just doing online sales for clothing, a lot of people will buy two different sizes and maybe return one as long as it's free returns or would it be. So maybe you're getting a 50% return rate because people just don't know. Maybe it's between a medium and a large, maybe it's between a large and an extra large. Very difficult when you have different fits. But that is going to change with technology, folks, in a big way. Yeah, speaking of shortages, did you hear this one? So my friends love this stuff, man. Uh, sh sriracha, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Sriracha. Sh sriracha? Well, there's a shortage, folks, uh, and they've been forced to suspend production of its iconic spicy sauces due, due to a shortage of chili peppers. Now, to this degree, yeah, it's a little bit too hot for me, man. It is. I used to love hot food. It messes with my belly a little bit now these days, so it's kind of tough. But these are the issues, folks, that are causing food prices to be spiking almost 12% 
in a month, okay? This is an exacerbated issue that literally has them suspending production, okay? So if you love this stuff, if you need it, uh, I'm not sure if it's still available on Amazon, but go out and get some because they confirmed Wednesday that a shortage of peppers in its inventory had affected production uh, and they are shutting down production for a period of time due to weather conditions affecting the quality of the chili peppers. So, yeah, it's not even supply. They're just talking about weather, normal stuff. This is out of our control. and Without this essential ingredient, we are unable to produce any of our products. Chili pepper shortage. So everything. Uh, it persists. All right, let's jump down the line to some of the other stocks that are making moves this morning. We talked about Target. Uh, Signet Jewelers, they're out with their numbers. We do have a few companies. I think we have some companies after the market, too. I'll take a look at that at this next break coming up because I think we have some numbers uh, for companies out today after the bell. Signet, they're trading higher, better than expected profit and revenue, upbeat full-year forecast. Looks like you can move diamonds and gold in this market still. SIG is their symbol. There's a nice pop for you, up 7.5%. We take a look longer term at this chart. Quite a pullback recently, and yeah, that's quite a pop. But boy, you're well off the highs, and that looks like a series of lower lows and lower highs for Signet Jewelers. Novavax, they're lower. Following the news, the FDA decision on their COVID-19 vaccine could be delayed. Uh, the agency needs to review changes in the company's manufacturing process, so they're trading, low, trading lower. NEO is trading lower. After the China-based electric vehicle maker's quarterly profit highlighted shrinking profit margins. Seems to be a common theme. Uh, Intel, they have a hiring freeze at its client computing group as it reassesses spending priorities amid global macroeconomic uncertainty. We jump over to Intel shares. They're basically flat. They traded pretty harshly lower yesterday, down about two dollars and fifty cents from forty three fifty to forty one. That's where you're chopping around today. Yeah, Tesla got an upgrade. UBS they upgraded them buy from neutral. I think they said the stock could have fifty percent from here is where they could go. So Tesla, let's see how they're trading on the open today. They gave almost it all back. You're up one point eight percent right now, up thirteen bucks. But boy, you were as high as seven fifty right around the open. Out of curiosity, Twitter shares down about six tenths percent right now. Facebook shares, how are they trading? Oh, did Tate, what's going on with Facebook? That's some weird. Oh, is it Meta? Did they just go Meta today? No? They sure did. Are they trading as Meta for the first time today? They are. Thank you. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's previously. Maybe it was yesterday when it spiked to 202. Nonetheless, Meta. I'll have to get used to that one. They're down uh, barely today as the markets catch a little bit of a bid. S&P is only down about 10 points right now. Yeah, I haven't pulled that up in a few days. So I guess they just started trading as Meta. And the PR shift and rebranding is complete, just like that. Uh, maybe this is where it chops around for a bit. Keep in mind, folks, this stock got down too. What's the low there? 169. You're almost $30 off the low that we had just in April. If the market sees some volatility, man, everything is going to see some volatility in this market. Five below is out with their numbers. A penny above, revenue below our estimates. They cut the full-year guidance. That's never a good deal. Trading down about 5%. And see this stock chopping around right at that 618. 121 uh, is the 618 on 5 below. And a couple other companies out with their numbers as well. All right, let's see what else I had pulled up here. Yeah, we got unemployment claims today. This number, very unimportant. As long as it's somewhere near 200 to 250,000, folks, I would just take it as that and move on. Initial applications jumping, though. If you want to read into it, 229,000 exceeding all estimates. This number, meaningless compared to what tomorrow's number means, in my opinion, in terms of CPI. You know, you're at 229. You can't sparse 10, 20, 30,000 jobs on a rolling basis in a healthy economy. You have a, a healthy churn of two to 250, 250 probably really over a historical basis. That number a little bit lower with where our job market is right now. Unadjusted claims only rose by 1,000 in a week through June 4th. So this number out through June 4th, uh, what's continuing claims? Yeah, continuing claims held at 1.3 million. That is a little bit of a rise, undeniable there. But you really just want to take a little bit of an average of a mean of a three-month basis on these, maybe. And at that level, we're still sitting pretty low on that number. Yeah. Four-week moving average, 215,000. 
That's a sweet number, folks. All right, stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the show. Don't forget about my dad's webinar, Timing the Trade, all day tomorrow, folks, going over his methodology trading. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we said, folks, the day is certainly young and we have a bid going on in this market. S&Ps, check out that acceleration. Let's put it on a five minute basis to see that move. You get a price acceleration at 945. We're trading at 4085. And just like that, folks, in the span of nine minutes, the S&Ps just some 30 points. We're trading at 4115. You have the three major markets in the green now. S&P is positive by one. NASDAQ 100 positive by 23. The Dow positive by 24. Russell, though, still taking it on the chin, man. Down 14 points. We jump over to commodities. Crude, 121.64 in the gold contract now. Contract right now down about six bucks. I had a question in the den talking about medical properties trust. MPW is their symbol. This thing's been sliding to negative territory, man. Now to jump over to the analyze tab real quick to see what they do. You pull up the fundamentals of this company. Where are we? I just had it up here. Thought I did. Uh, where did I just have it? I just had their information, unfortunately. Earnings? No, it's supposed to be fundamentals. Uh, there we go. Company profile. Okay. Uh, they're a real estate investment tr trust, and they engage in the business of investing in, owning, and leasing healthcare real estate. Okay, so they have huge company, 438 
properties leased or loaned to 53 operators. Uh, it also makes mortgage loans to healthcare operators collateralized by their real estate assets. Taking a look at this company, now the question was, what you're saying here, Jimmy, going to five bucks maybe or something like that, potentially. So what, it's a new 52-week low, okay, and uh, on its way to five bucks or less. I'm not sure it's on its way to five dollars or less. It made it to 12 bucks during the lows of COVID. Right now, you have about a 7% yield on this equity. Now, the one thing that's interesting is jump, just jumping around the news to see what's going on, um, even just within the Thinkorswim platform itself, Going back to early May, you had a lot of firms coming out. Maybe they cut their target, but they're cutting it to 26 bucks, uh, to 24 from 26. Uh, RBC to 22 from 25. Uh, what? Credit Suisse to 23 from 26. Okay, still what, well above those levels, but here's where I'll take a look at. You go all the way back, man, you're basically trading right at the highs we had in 2007 and 2013. So maybe that's an area we find some support. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Live programming all day. Check out my dad's webinar kicking off at